Jacob Soboroff drops by the reporter from NBC News to talk about a crime worthy of an indictment at The Hague. We can't forget the kids separated from their families by this Trump administration. Check this out. Leave your comments. Ding the bell. Share it with your friends and subscribe to our channel. When Donald Trump announced that he was running for president back in 2015, he basically announced that he was going to run on a platform of racism largely directed, at least immediately over the short term, uh, toward Hispanic people, toward uh, people from south of our border and has reiterated that over and over and over again. And fairly early on in his administration, uh, started putting uh, policies and practices into place that, uh, you know, executed exactly that vision. I think the, the, one of the absolute finest reporters in the business in America at any network right now is Jacob Soboroff. And he has been all over this issue. He has a new book out that, uh, you know, summarizes and, uh, just brilliantly lays out uh, these the, the stories, the reality, the horror of uh, everything that has happened in this regard. It's titled Separated, Inside an American Tragedy. I have just started reading it. I, have, I, 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 I apologize that I haven't had the time to, to, to read the entire book, but I, it's on, it, you know, I'm, I'm working on it. And uh, Jacob Soberoff is on the line with us right now, correspondent with NBC and MSNBC. JacobSoberoff.com is his website. You can tweet him at Jacob Soboroff, S-O-B-O-R-O-F-F. Uh, Jacob, welcome to the program. Tell us what led you into this issue. Tom, it's so good to be with you. Thank you, um, first of all, so much for having sure. me. Look, the reason I wanted to do this book is because, um, you know, so many of us remember two summers ago exactly what happened. The Trump administration systematically separated um, what today doctors, the American Academy, of Pedi Aca American Academy excuse me, of Pediatrics calls abuse, Physicians for Human Rights, the Nobel Peace Prize winning organization calls torture. Uh, the Trump administration systematically tortured and abused, in the words of those experts, uh, over 5,500 children, taking them away from their parents in an unprecedented systematic campaign to separate uh, parents and children uh, at the southwest border for the for the sole purpose of scaring people away from coming into this country. Uh, and I saw that family separation policy uh, with my own eyes. And the reality is, as you alluded to, I'd been covering border issues, not just for NBC and MSNBC for a long time, but even before I started working here. Uh, and while I was there and I saw it myself, I walked into that former Walmart, 250,000 square feet, 1,500 boys, 10 to 17 detained there, hundreds of them separated, you know, allowed outside two or three hours a day only. Uh, and then inside the, the processing station in McAllen, Texas, where kids were in cages, laying on floors under mylar blankets, supervised by security contractors in a watchtower. I, I, I have an admission to make, which is that I didn't, I honestly didn't see it shamefully, a uh, coming. Um, and so this book is my exploration of why, um, how this could have happened, how this could happen in the United States of America. It's why the book's called Separated Inside an American Tragedy, because that's exactly what this is, what this was and what it continues to be, honestly. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, I had a lot of, I had a lot of learning to do um, myself, and I wanted to be transparent about that and put that down on, on paper in this book. Joseph Stalin uh, famously said, you know, when a million, when one person dies, it's a tragedy. When a million people die, it's a statistic. And uh, so much of this has been presented in the context of statistics. This many hundred kids here, this many thousand kids there, this, you know, this sort of thing. Um, I, I remember the first time I saw you reporting on this on MSNBC, it transported me back to my own childhood. I was never separated from my parents, but I, I tried to imagine what I would feel like when I was six, seven, eight, ten years old, if somebody had torn me away from my mom and dad, uh, particularly for years, if somebody had put me in a cage, uh, you know, and now it's going on years in some cases, uh, if somebody had, 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 you know, basically sold me into the foster care system, or I think, you know, what if, what if somebody had taken away, I have three children, what if somebody had taken away one of my children? How would I feel about that? And, and when you personalize this, when you imagine this, um, it becomes so unbelievably horrible. How, you, you saw these kids, how were they responding to being torn away from their parents? You know, and the other, Tom, you make a really good point, which is that we all actually reacted that way two summers ago. And, if, you know, part of the reason that, again, I want to do this 
and put all this new information about what happened in there is because two years ago feels like two decades ago almost with so much that has gone on over the course of this administration. And to answer your question, one official who was directly involved in the reunification of these children not only told me was it the greatest humanitarian crisis of his lifetime, referring to domestic U.S. politics and what it did to these children, but that clinically speaking, childhood trauma leads to a century of suffering for kids that go through something like this. And I guess, I mean, there's one specific anecdote I think that I would love to share with you, which is a couple weeks ago, maybe it was a month ago at this point, I was down in Yuma, Arizona, covering President Trump's visit to see his uh, his border wall. And uh, Juan, the father who I write about in the book, um, sent me a text. He was separated from his son, Jose, for almost five months. And were it not for a, a fantastic immigration lawyer, Lindsay Tzlowski, at the Immigrant Defenders Law Center here in L.A., who got them back together, they could have been permanently separated. There were 400 parents who were deported without their children, and still yet we don't know where all the parents and children who were separated are. And and the reason I bring that up is that Juan said to me, if you see um, President Trump asking something for me, why is it that you separated us and left us with this psychological trauma? And that's exactly what it is. It is, it is a lifetime. It's almost incomprehensible, a lifetime of psychological trauma that has been perpetrated upon these children um, by the administration for for no for not only for no reason other than to scare people from coming away, but despite and this is what I write about in the book, I didn't know about at the time, the best efforts of so many career civil servants who did care about the best interests of the children, who warned time and again whether it was it within Homeland Security, within Health and Human Services, um, that this was going to do this to these children, and yet the politicals led by Stephen Miller. Um, move forward and and went ahead with this nevertheless and here we are today uh jacob we, we've got about two minutes so we're going to hit a hard break here I'm, I'm curious who in the administration was most directly responsible for this who is maintaining it and what can average americans do to try to change this sure well you know stephen miller is the easy one to, to finger for this but it, it, one thing i learned and i write about extensively in the book is that there were these key inflection points where where these warnings were were, were, were put forward by um, these career officials. And one instance I'd like to tell you about before we have to go is that Scott Lloyd, the man who had custodial custody um, over these children for the federal government within the Office of Refugee Resettlement, when the list leaked to the New York Times in April of 2018 that they were holding 700 separated children in the Homeland Security Department's custody, his first instinct was not to go rescue the children, tell the administration this wasn't what they should be doing, but it was to get rid of the list. And there are stories like that throughout the book, whether it... Where is this guy now? Scott Lloyd is no longer within the administration, but he was moved from HHS to another position within the administration. Um, But but he's still there. Kirsten Nielsen was warned this would violate the constitutional rights um, as the Secretary of Homeland Security of the migrants coming to the country. You know, there have been virtually no consequences for the people responsible for this policy. And I think that's important for all of us to remember. Yeah. Is there is there we have 30 seconds. Is there any effort in Congress or anywhere else to hold some of these folks responsible or Trump? and well, you, for that still, you still hear um, congressional committees like House Judiciary consistently following up on this, trying to bring people before the Congress. But the reality is and it's 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 it was a stark um, thing to learn for me. No, the answer is no right now. I mean, I get questions all the time on my social media. Why aren't people hold before the hate? I mean, these are questions that I, as a reporter, cannot answer. It's for our elected officials to do so, and now is the time for them to do that. Yeah, amen. The book is Separated, Inside an American Tragedy. The author, Jacob Soberoff, uh, one of the finest reporters working in America today and doing just spectacular work. If you don't have this book, get it. In fact, get an extra copy and share it with somebody else. Jacob, thank you so much for dropping by today.